What's up guys, Jared Campisi back at the track today for another installment. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most exciting races on the track. This is the race that basically defines who's the fastest in your school, who's the fastest in your state, the fastest man in the world, and of course we're talking about the 100 meter dash. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to run this race correctly, the different phases that make up the race because I don't think a lot of people understand that it's not just an all out sprint from start to finish, there are different phases. Understanding how these phases work will help you run like a much more complete race. It'll help you run a lot faster. And um, so what we're gonna do is talk about those phases and then I'm gonna go into a workout that helps you understand and work on one of those phases. So um, like always, the complete workout will be in the description below. And um, if you wanna learn how to run faster in the 100 meter dash, stick around. Okay, so let's get right into this. Um, first off, the 100 meter dash <clears throat> is not just a run as hard as you can from the starting line to the finish. That's not how you're gonna run your fastest 100 meter dash. That's not how the race is supposed to be run. I never even realized that until probably like my junior year in college. Um, there are phases to the race. So this, the 100 is different than other events because in the 400 and the 200, you have these floating phases. You have parts of the race where you're not giving 100% effort. Well, that's different in the 100 because you're always basically giving 100% effort, but there are phases to the race. So basically what I'm gonna do is talk about these different phases and then hopefully you'll have a better understanding and you can start practicing in practice on these different phases and that'll help you run a complete 100 meter dash and that'll help you get the most out of your potential. So starting off, we're at the starting line here, the start. So the 100 meter start is arguably the most important part of the race because you, when you're at competing at the highest level, basically your start is gonna determine how you get out in the race and, and it, it's, it's such a quick race that it can make or break your race, okay? So when you see the world-class guys at, at the top of the top and they're like trying to guess the start, it's because it's really that important, you know? Being able to come out like perfectly on the gun when they, and they've changed these rules now, it can be the difference between winning and losing a race. So <clears throat> I have a blocks video, how, to, how and why to use blocks. I'll put the link in the description below. Definitely watch that video if you wanna get better at the 100. Um, and I also have an acceleration video, which I'll put the link in the video, that'll come a little bit later. So anyway, starting blocks, learn how to use them, learn how to do it correctly. Coming out, this is actually the first step of your drive phase, my logo here. This is the position that you wanna be in. Um, and basically that puts us into the first phase of the race, right? So you have your start and then you're basically driving. This is where you're building acceleration. This is where you're using that strength in the gym. You're using that, your flexibility, you're using like your, your uh, coordination to drive your speed, okay? And so the drive phase is really gonna last the first 20 to 30 meters, okay? And that's where we're generating all of our acceleration. That's why we wanna be low out of the blocks and keep that angle to drive. We're pushing back, we're using our, our power to drive, okay? What I see, like, one of the most common mistakes from people who are just amateur 100 meter runners is they come out of the blocks and they, instead of driving like this, they come out and they're just standing straight up within a couple of steps. Now you're not in a position to drive at all. At this point, that's basically a top speed position, okay? Which is gonna come later in the race. So, the first 20 to 30 meters, that's gonna be your drive phase. Keep your head down, keep your angle low, and drive. You want your steps, you wanna be getting full extension, but you also don't wanna be like getting high knees up and stuff like that. You want quick steps that are powerful and generating your speed, okay? From there, after the first 20 to 30 meters, <clears throat> we move into what is called a transition phase, okay? So, this is when you slowly start to come up after that 30 to 50 meter mark in between there and you're story, slowly starting to come up, you're starting to relax, you're starting to get upright, you're starting to get the knees up, you're starting to go to big arms, relax shoulders, and then we're moving into our top speed phase, okay? So that transition phase happens very quickly. It's basically the transition between driving down and then being straight up, okay? So, like I said, drive phase will last anywhere between 20 to 30 meters, depending on how good you are. That 30 to 40 to 50 meter mark, that's where you're transitioning into your top speed, okay? And that's when, I, like I said, you're coming up with the big arms, opening up like this, nice and tall and big. And then from that 50 to 80, and basically 50 to 80, almost to the end of the race, <clears throat> is your top speed. After you're standing up and you've hit your top speed, 
you're able to hold your top speed for a little bit of time, but everyone is slowing down in the 100 meter race. That's what people don't understand. Even the top athletes in the world, Usain Bolt, you know, Asafa Powell, like um, Gatlin, they're all slowing down. Everyone's slowing down in the race, okay? You can't run at full speed for 100 meters. You just can't do it. So what happens is the people who look like they're running away from everyone, they're just actually slowing down less, okay? And so what the way that you slow down less or the way that you hold your top speed for longer is your technique comes into play. It's huge with your technique. You see like Usain Bolt, he's, he's got those big long strides and he's nice and relaxed and that's why he just runs away from people. And um, Gatlin's got those insane high knees and he's just got this big open stride and he's just able to hold that speed and that power. That's whenever you want like everything just going forward and backwards. When you get into the swaying back and forth and the head's going everywhere and the knees coming out, that those are the people that lose the most speed because they're not being efficient with their running, okay? And so um, being able to hold that top speed through the end of the race is really gonna be the difference between who wins and loses. And when it comes to the end, when it comes to the end of the race, basically at that point, you just wanna keep relaxing through the finish line and keep going to your technique. And um, when it comes to like leaning and all that kind of stuff, um, I see a lot of people that would lean way too early. They'll start leaning like five steps before the finish line. And if you look at in a leaning position, you're not in a, you're basically not in a position to do anything. You're not holding your speed at that point. You're not obviously not generating speed. And you can actually, a lot of people will fall at the finish line or they'll even like pull hamstrings or pull like string quads because you're just, when you're leaning, you're just using these huge, you get these huge back kicks and then you're trying to pull your leg all the way back up. And um, in my opinion, some in a lot of cases, if you just run through the line instead of trying to lean, um, you'll beat people who are trying to out lean you. So um, leaning is a whole different video I could go into. If you wanna see more about that, let me know in the comments below. But um, that's basically the end of the 100 meter dash, okay? So just running through the line. And that's what I preach. That's why it matters running through the line in the workout that I'm gonna do uh, following this. You always want to be in a habit of just running through the line, never starting to stop a little bit early and coasting through the line in, in practice and things like that. It's that championship mentality, finishing every rep of every workout, and you know, even when you're doing warm-ups and stuff like that, just always running through the line. It'll help um, carry over into your races. Okay, so that's the basically the gist of the 100 meter dash. Um, there isn't really a race plan, but there's phases to the race from the start to that driving phase, your acceleration phase, to your transition phase, into your top speed phase, and then finishing the race, okay? So those are the kind of the phases of the 100 meter dash, and there's workouts you can do to work on each one of those phases, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demo a workout for you guys today um, that works on your top speed, okay? And holding your top speed and um, doing the correct form and the technique that will allow you to hold that top speed and run away from people at the end of the race. Holy dear God. <laughs> Sorry, are you done? <laughs> Thanks. Um, so what it's gonna be called is flying 40s. And so there's gonna be a build up period where we're building into our top speed. And then the 40 meters part of the race is where we're gonna be running and actually, we wanna be at top speed when we hit that 40 and I'll go into more. Um, in the detail in a second. And so basically we're gonna do six flying 40s and with about four to five minutes rest. And so, um, yeah, here we go. Let's get started. Okay. So I just warmed up. If you don't know how to warm up correctly, <clears throat> excuse me, there will be a link below for the whole warm up that me and the lady just did. So for the workout, what we're gonna be doing is, we're gonna be doing a workout that reinforces the top speed portion of the 100 meter dash. And so what that means is we're gonna be doing six by flying 40s, okay? And so what that means is we're gonna have an acceleration por portion of the workout, but that's just building up into our top speed. That's not part of the workout, okay? So use whatever distance you need to get up to your top speed that's not like running at 100%, you know? So it should be like 90% effort to get up to top speed. And then once you're at top speed, you're holding that top speed. That's where the workout starts, okay? So what we're doing is I set up 40 meters. So if you see my book bag over there, to the uh, yellow whatever thing that's going out, the arm, what's it called, teams? I don't know, barricade. The barricade, yeah, the yellow barricade. So from the book bag to the yellow barricade is 40 meters. <clears throat> so that's where the actual workout is gonna be. So I'm giving myself about 20 to 30 meters to start. I actually have a very good uh, acceleration. I can get to my top speed very easily. So I don't need a lot of space to do that. And then what I'm gonna do is accelerate, get up to top speed. At the start of that book bag, I should be at my top speed. And then I'm just gonna hold my top speed 
all the way through until I run past the barricade, okay? And so what we're gonna be doing is thinking about running at as efficient as possible with that top speed. Everything forward and back, nice and big and open, relaxed shoulders, relaxed face, relaxed jaw, and um, legs coming and turning over, and just that's what we wanna do. Focus on holding our top speed as well as we can with as little, little effort as possible. Okay, so we're gonna be doing six of these, four to five minutes rest, and here we go. my first rep I felt really tight I didn't feel like I was getting full extension on my stride which means I'm not getting all the way full extension here and I'm not getting it all the way up at the hips okay I felt like my hips were sank when I watched back on the video I saw a little bit of that as well so this is the time to make those adjustments and for me whenever I back off on my effort just a tiny bit my stride will open up I'll be a lot more fluid with my running and I'll actually run faster so this is the time to figure out in practice where your effort level needs to be in order to run your fastest, okay? So your effort doesn't always equate to your fastest running. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's go with rep number two. So I just finished the second rep of the workout and I notice I'm having a little bit of trouble holding my top speed through the uh, 40 meter uh, fly zone. And um, if you have trouble, people ask me how to finish races, I have trouble finishing the race. There's really two reasons for that. One, you're not running efficiently or you're putting too much effort early in the race. Or two, you're not in good enough shape. And I think probably the second one is what happens more often than not. Um, because people don't understand that in order to get in shape for 100, you have to actually run a longer distance in workouts than 100. So you're going to be doing, it's called overtraining. So if you're training for 100, you're going to be running 150s, 200s, 250s even. So that's, doing those kind of workouts is what allows you to finish the last 50 meters in the 100 or the 200, the 400, whatever you're doing. Always doing that overtraining kind of stuff. And I'll talk more about that in another video and I'll even add workouts that help you overtrain for different events. Um, and not overtrain as in training too much, but overtrain for that event. So um, let's hit number three. So that's the first three reps of the workout done. You guys should be doing six with four to five minutes rest. This is a good workout to do with other people. Um, and if you have blocks, use them. But just make sure you're not running an all out 70 meters, okay? That first 30 should be a build up. So make sure you're using that as a build up, okay? So I hope that helps shed some light on the 100 meter dash all the different phases of the race and I'll be doing more workouts on how to work on each one of those phases as well. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. And if you want to see certain things, be sure to let me know. Make sure you hit a thumbs up if this was helpful for you. Hit that subscribe, <laughs> hit that subscribe button as that really helps us out. And um, until next time, stay fast my friends. It's crazy sometimes thinking you can own a piece of the world. It's just floating through.